AliExpress has a reputation for cheap rubbish, especially in the cycle industry, where there's this notion you can't necessarily trust the products or the sellers. Well, over the last five years, I've spent nearly 6,000 quid of my, of my own cash on stuff. So what's my take and what does the data say as well? My name, as always, is Luke and welcome back to Trace Fellow, where I also cut my self-shaving earlier. Now, it's worth stating up front, I'm not being paid anything by <laughs> AliExpress or any other e-commerce platform, for, for that matter, to say these things. The paid promotion flyout that some of you might see up there, that pertains only to the Sirocco sponsor spot that I've got later on. Even though I say it's a sponsor spot, I still need to declare it to YouTube, hence the flyout. Anyway, all of the purchases that I'll be going through today have been made by me with my own cash and the AliExpress account I use has no affiliation to this channel. I made it way before Trace Fellow was even a thing with a random username and email, so I won't get any preferential treatment is what I'm trying to say. So first things first, I downloaded my entire order history. So let me show you what the data says and I'll give you the headlines. So from July 2018 to present, I've made 174 orders on AliExpress that have totaled 5,713 pounds, 68 pence. So yeah, <laughs> quite, quite a lot. Now the vast majority of those have been bike parts. I did buy the occasional pair of sunglasses and a fountain pen, I think, but about 98% are bike bits. So of those 174 orders, 164 made it to my house. So 10 were canceled. One was canceled by me a couple of minutes after I ordered it. The other nine were canceled by sellers. This can happen either if they don't ship you the product or more likely they just miscounted their stock and they don't have it available to send to you. Either way, all 10 of those cancellations, I got my money back. Now it's also worth stating the 164 orders I was charged for all made it to my house. Nothing was like lost in the post. Now delivery times we'll get to a bit later on because there are definitely some outliers, but in general, expect to wait about two weeks, at least for the UK. So of those 164, did I get what I ordered? So what was listed in the product description? So basically, was I scammed? The short answer is no, only one order was slightly problematic. When buying the L2 GR9, gravel group set for this video here. I spent some time scouting out the cheapest one that I could find on AliExpress, but when it was delivered, I only got the shifters. The rear derailleur was missing. The listing stated the rear derailleur was included, so I messaged the seller and was told the wording on the listing was actually inaccurate and it was never included in the first place. I obviously argued with them and eventually we agreed upon a partial refund of the cost to cover the missing derailleur. Now let's talk packaging. So of those 164 products, <laughs> how many showed up to my house damaged? Only one of them actually. So I ordered two carbon bottle cages from a seller. One of them showed up broken. I messaged them as well. I messaged the seller as soon as I received it to say it was broken. They never responded. So an AliExpress rep stepped in. I requested half my money back and I got it. Easy peasy. And finally, of those 164 products, how many were crap? Well, this is obviously completely subjective, but most of you out there know my general approach to things like this, i.e. don't expect perfection. 140 were good or excellent. Three were, you know, kind of okay. So I had a set of magnesium pedals. They worked, but they were really squeaky. The, well, a carbon disc frame that I bought relatively recently, actually. It was safe and it, again, it did work, but it was just an, absolute nightmare to cable and set up the bike. It was just a bit rough, rough around the edges. And finally, these Gaio fingerless cycle gloves. I've had two pairs now and they're, you know, they're all right, but they don't last particularly long and I find they fray quite easily. Now the 21 bad products. These are things which either broke really easily, weren't safe or just weren't really fit for purpose. They actually total five, <laughs> £537 
40p. So I kind of added up over the years. But do bear in mind, I often purposefully buy pretty crummy looking products because it, it makes for interesting comparisons in videos. For example, four of those 21 are pretty shoddy looking carbon bottle cages that I used in this video here. So, you know, those figures aren't gonna be a little bit inflated for that reason. But anyway, rather than going through all 21 here, I'll actually link them in the video description so you can check them out at your leisure. Anyway. With that data-driven bit aside, here are some more general tips for shopping and what to be aware of. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. So summer is basically here. Ladies and gents, time to bust out the short sleeve <laughs> cycle jerseys. And today's sponsor, Sirocco, have me covered. So they're a cool little Spanish company that I've been working with for over two and a half years by now. They make some wicked cycle clothing that looks great and lasts forever as well. I mean, this M2 jersey I've got here, I've had over two years. It must have been in and out of the wash around a hundred times by this point, and it still looks nearly brand new. Now, this SRX Pro jersey is one of my new favorites. It looks really good when you've got it on. It's super lightweight and comfortable, and the construction is top tier. Really lovely fabrics reinforcing on the rear pockets to aid in durability. And all of the seams use flat lock stitching, which is a really strong stitch, and it lays flat against the body for added comfort. They've also got loads of bib shorts to choose from. These basic Aspen ones have been great, really nice padding and super comfortable. If you've got a bit more cash to, to kind of splash around, their BX line are awesome as well. A little bit of extra cushion in the padding and the construction is a bit more plush as well. And found this the other day, hidden pocket in the back for stuff. Anyway, Sir uh, Sirocco make all sorts of cycle gear, so use my link, save 10% off the entire site, and anything you do buy helps me out a little bit as well, which is, yeah, uh, pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, enough of that, let's get back to it. So the short answer here is no. The seller only gets paid once the delivery of that item is confirmed. You can either do this manually yourself, or it automatically happens, I think 14 or 15 days after AliExpress sees you've received the parcel via their parcel tracking, which is actually pretty accurate in my experience. This is why for the GR9 gravel group set that I mentioned earlier, I was able to negotiate a lower price. The seller wanted those funds released to them, but I wasn't gonna allow that and confirm delivery until we'd negotiated a lower price to take into account that missing rear derailleur. It, it's not a perfect system by any means, but as long as you're diligent, it does offer some protection. So you can cancel orders that you've made by mistake and, and get a refund, as long as those things haven't been shipped out by the seller. But be aware, a lot of sellers will change the status of stuff to being shipped very quickly after you've placed the order, like within minutes <laughs> in some cases. So if you did want to cancel stuff, Often you've got to be pretty quick on the uptake. Right, I can only talk to UK deliveries, but the AliExpress logistics network is really good, if you ask me. I've only paid import duties recently on much larger parcels, like bicycle frames, that have been delivered to me directly from China. I think what they tend to do is ship the parcel from wherever in Asia to a logistics hub somewhere in Europe, and from there it gets re-delivered to the UK. So from a HMRC or Border Force perspective, it's as if that parcel has been shipped from within Europe, therefore circumventing a lot of the you know, import fees. At least that's what I think is happening from when I followed the parcel tracking. But regardless, I haven't paid any import fees on small or medium sized parcels for years at this point. Like I said, the AliExpress logistics network is pretty impressive if you ask me. Okay, so again, I can only talk to UK delivery times, but in general, a two week wait is, is quite usual. I've had things show up quicker, but things have taken much longer. For example, if you have to buy a set of carbon wheels that the seller then has to raise the order, make the wheels and ship them to you, you could be waiting months. I mean, a couple years ago, I waited three months for a set of carbon wheels to be delivered. And in one instance, I bought a bicycle chain that took six months to arrive. So long, in fact, that I'd already got a refund on the product, the seller had shut down and stopped trading on, on AliExpress, and then it showed up anyway. So two weeks, but it can take longer. 
Okay, so this is where things can fall down slightly. Let's say you receive a product, confirm delivery, and it's all fine, but then a month later, you're using it and it breaks or something goes wrong. At this point, a refund or a return can be tricky. You have 15 days from accepting and confirming the delivery to raise a dispute with the seller. And during this period, if you can't agree a refund or something like that, an AliExpress rep will step in to mediate and make a final decision based upon the evidence. And they're quite reasonable as well, in my experience. But after this 15 day window, AliExpress washes their hands of the problem and any issues that you might have are directly between you and the seller. AliExpress as a company doesn't sell anything. They're just a sales platform. It's actually the individual sellers and vendors that you're gonna be dealing with on the whole. So in this example, let's say you bought a group set from the official L2 store on AliExpress. Even though it's over that 15 day grace period or whatever, they're probably still gonna help you out. You've bought directly from L2, a multi you know, million dollar company company just via AliExpress. So they're gonna have warranties for their products and most likely a pretty decent after sales and, and service team to help you out. However, if you've bought that same group set from a, a seller that's called shop 2791832 that's been open like a week, yeah, <laughs> chances are you're on your own. First and foremost, check the seller. Try and buy from an official store if you can. And if not, read the reviews and check how long the store has been open. If they've been trading for like five plus years, chances are they're gonna be pretty legit and probably stand behind what they're selling. Number two, to be safe, take screenshots of the product description for the thing you're buying. The seller can update the description whenever they like. So this is gonna help you if you ever need to raise a dispute for some reason. Keep an eye on the tracking link that comes with your parcel. In some rare cases, I have seen AliExpress assume that you've received a parcel when you haven't, and then 15 days later, they confirm delivery. In the event of a problem, it's much easier to negotiate with the seller before that delivery has been confirmed and the payment has been released to them. So do keep an eye on that, and you can extend that delivery window if necessary. Number four, read the product reviews, including the bad ones, or, although do bear in mind, every product is gonna have bad reviews, even if the product is absolutely fantastic and the seller themselves is a literal reincarnation of Jesus Christ. So, <laughs> um, also do pay particular attention to uh, reviews with photos attached to them. These can be quite enlightening. Now, I've said before, but it's worth repeating, there's a distinct difference between counterfeit and knockoff. Knockoff products are those that resemble another item. They're usually at a lower price point than the original that inspired them, and that's usually what leads to the sale. Counterfeit products, on the other hand, are specifically designed to deceive the buyer into thinking they're getting the genuine article when they're not. Now, knockoffs, I'm, I'm less worried about. I think they're quite easy to spot, if you ask me. I think it's the counterfeit, the, the fake products that you're gonna be most concerned with. But in general, if it's too good to be true, it usually is. So let's have a look at some examples. Okay, so let's kick it off with some Shimano Ice Tech rotors on AliExpress. These are the RT86 variant, 22 quid here with free delivery. On Wiggle, the same rotors will set you back 40 quid. So they're essentially half price. So let's try and assess whether these are real. First thing to do, check the, well, check the product images. So these look legitimate in my opinion. Nice ground finish on the brake surface and they've got the official Shimano tag there. Same again, the tag is present. Nice ground finish on this, on this product image. It's also got Japan laser etched into the steel. I'm not sure if you can see it there, but I would, uh, well, I suspect the ones being photographed at least are legitimate Shimano products. But one thing threw me off on this listing. If you scroll down to the review images, which is a really good source of information when checking stuff like this, you can see the actual product packaging. It's just some <laughs> cheap plastic packaging. But more importantly, it's got China laser etched onto the steel here. Whereas on the official Shimano rotors, they've actually got Japan laser etched there. However, after a bit of digging, turns out these are the slightly more premium RT86 rotors, whereas the one being shown here, this is a 76. It's a slightly cheaper version made by Shimano in China using stamped steel for the rotor face. So you can see a slightly rounded edge there 
on the on the steel of the rotor whereas on this slightly more premium version you've got us a, well, a sharp ground finish on the brake surface so after studying this listing in a bit of detail I think if I was to, to, to kind of put a bet on, on this, you'd get legitimate Shimano products from the seller. I'd need to get them in my hands to be doubly sure, but a good sign is the fact they actually use the brand name Shimano within the text on the listing. I'll show you an example later on where this isn't the case, but often if they're kind of trying to sell you counterfeit products, they'll shy away from doing that. But I mean, hopefully you can see, even with loads of in-depth knowledge, it's often quite difficult to fully assess whether stuff is real or not. Conversely, for these SRAM centerline discs on AliExpress, I don't think these are real. The first thing which tipped me off is the price. These are five quid with free shipping on AliExpress. On Wiggle, the same rotors are 32 quid. So they're like a sixth of the cost. So just the delta in price, massive alarm bells. The second thing, they use SRAM in the product title, but if you go down to the description, they shy away from using the actual brand name. So they just say bicycle centerline disc rotor. They don't use SRAM. They don't use the brand name. Another thing, which is a bit sneaky, if you look at the product images on this particular image here, they don't show the other side of the disc. So on the other side, it says, well, you can see here on the real one, they've got SRAM laser etched, centerline is laser etched, into the actual steel of the disc. I think they've purposefully chosen to show the other side of the rotor because they don't want to show the brand name or the, or the lack thereof. So if I was to bet, I would say these are not real. Okay, this is an interesting one. A full group set on AliExpress for 270 quid. So pretty, pretty damn cheap. A lot cheaper than you could get elsewhere, I suspect. I think this is actually gonna be legitimate. So they're mixing Altegra R8000 shifters here with 105 R7000 rear derailleurs. So for the rear derailleur and front derailleur. That's an interesting combination. Normally you wouldn't get that on a, on a shop shelf. That leads me to believe it's probably gonna be legitimate. Another thing to bear in mind with stuff like this is to counterfeit a, a, a rotor like this, it's gonna be easy. This is an easy thing to manufacture in a lot of ways. Just gonna shape and mill some steel. Something like a shifter, that's a very intricate mechanism in there. That's not going to be easy to, to counterfeit. The minute someone gets hold of a counterfeit version of one of these, that's no good. They're never going to buy another one and they won't sell anymore. So I think if they're going to counterfeit anything on this listing, it's going to be the cassette and the chain because they're easy to make and easy to slap a brand name on, right? And if you scroll down to the reviews down the bottom here, someone mirrors this opinion. The chain and the cassette are not original. The seller swears they are, but... If you think about it, they're going to be the easiest things to counterfeit. So if I was a betting man, I would say all of this is legitimate Shimano stuff, actually. Again, I'd need to get it in my hands to see it. But you just got to think, it's not easy to counterfeit a set of shifters and a rear derailleur. So it's, it's likely to be real, in my opinion. And finally, something in my opinion, which is un unquestionably fake or counterfeit, it's these Mavic Cosmic Elite wheels here. So these are allegedly a 50 mil deep Mavic Cosmic for 120 quid. Firstly, that's never happening. <laughs> also, they never use the term Mavic or Cosmic in the product title, nor, I've, I've searched the, the, the whole listing, nor do they use it anywhere in the product description either. It's only the images that use that use those terms. So maybe they can claim plausible deniability or something like that, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Another thing, once you dig a little bit deeper, these are actually fully aluminium rims as well, so they're, they're, not, they're not carbon. So as far as I'm aware, Mavic don't make this wheel set in a 50 mil deep aluminium version. Also, looking at the review, if we scroll down here, uh, you don't have to look for very long until you find someone that says, yeah, they're copies, they're heavy, but they look good. So in my opinion, these are unquestionably fake and it's, it's pretty obvious if you know uh, a little bit about stuff like this. But hopefully you can see when you're looking at AliExpress, it, it's quite questionable. Like you really have to kind of delve in to assess whether these are, are counterfeit or not. Often just on the surface, it's quite difficult to tell. So do a little bit of research, be careful um, and yeah, just take your time when buying stuff like this. So, can you trust AliExpress? I think as long as you're sensible, yeah, on the whole, you definitely can. In 99% of cases, in my experience, you're gonna get exactly what you paid for. I can't guarantee that everything you buy is gonna be an amazing product, but, but hopefully I've given you some advice to help you shop and also protect yourself in the event of a problem. But 
if you're still cautious, yeah, I totally get it. I've got something else for you. So great, you can trust AliExpress as a platform, but I hear you, <laughs> ultimately, unless you have a wealth of experience in this stuff like I do, it can be difficult to assess the quality and longevity of some of the cycle kit just by looking at it on the screen. So a friend of mine called Joe, that some of you will be familiar with from the channel China Cycling, he set up a new venture called Panda Podium. Again, I have no affiliation or vested interest in this company. I just think it's a really cool idea. So they stock a lot of the cheaper cycling components that you'll find on AliExpress and the like, but with a bit of a difference. So virtually all of the team over at Panda Podium are cyclists and they personally test every product before deciding to sell it. So if you get something from them, you can assume it's got the stamp of approval from an experienced cyclist. Now, Joe himself actually knows a lot of the owners of the companies that Panda Podium deals with, and he's been to the factories where they make the stuff as well. But basically, the way he pitched it to me, it's like buying cycle gear on AliExpress on easy mode. So hopefully that'll give you some idea of what it's like. Definitely worth a look if you're into that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, he's just a great guy. I really want him and his team over there to succeed. So go and have a look and tell him Trace sent you. Uh, or don't, it doesn't really, doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, anyway, subscribe if you like this kind of thing. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode. And if you've got any questions or comments for me, leave me a comment, but, but make sure it's got one of these in it. A, ba a baguette, a baguette emoji. It's a bit floppier than a real baguette. Oh, it's torn. No. Or well, at least it has like a mouth now. Hello, I'm the baguette. Um, I've been, <laughs> I've been in this garage far too long. What it's like, oh, it's 10 o'clock. I've been in this garage like five, six hours straight at this point. I need to go to bed. Right, I've got to think of a, an interesting an interesting outro. Um, let's just fade out and it'll just be my face in the, in the black screen. And then it'll just like slowly come in. And that'll be the end of the video. Right, see you next time. Bye. See you later.